Xmax D2, and welcome back to another reading journal. I am I'm not particularly sad to announce this, but this is going to be the last episode of Reading Journal. Um, hopefully you all have enjoyed watching me just talk about some books. I personally have not enjoyed the editing side of these videos that much, um, because it's mostly just listening to myself talk for like an hour and having to like decide what to cut down, and I just, I don't like doing it that much, so this is gonna be the last one. Maybe I'll bring it back if I feel like I need to talk about books again. But the other reason I'm t stopping is because it really hasn't encouraged me to read anymore. We'll get to that in a moment than I was before. Um, but yeah, this, I have an interesting drink again. This time, this is an Ocean Bomb sparkling water, and this is lychee flavored. This particular can has um, Chibi Usagi, I believe is the character's name, uh, from Sailor Moon. This is specifically Sailor Moon Crystal, like, marketing thing. Anyway, I mentioned that this series really hasn't encouraged me to read more, like the tryout series has encouraged me to play more games that I own. Uh, and the biggest example of that is uh, Neuromancer. I've been reading this book for at least half a year. And I am, uh... Maybe a quarter of the way through it. I just... I just don't read as much as I used to. And what I've read is fun. I like it. But... I'd wanted to try and, like, finish it so I could talk about it on this episode or whatever, since it's the last episode, but I just didn't. I figured I'd talk about it anyway. It's cool. So far. It's very, very much, like, the basis for cyberpunk as a genre. And you can tell, read some of this book, go play a little bit of Cyberpunk 77 or just watch someone play it. They're really, like, re like, the, the lineage... From this to that is very visible. So, uh, that's really all I'll say about it. Cause I haven't finished it, so I can't really talk much about what happens in it. The next thing I have here, I got this. We went to, me and my girlfriend went to the local anime convention. And one of the vendors had some manga. It was a vendor with a bunch of import products, but also just manga in both English and Japanese. So I picked up this one because I am, as you probably know, a fan of Marvel Comics. Um, and so I was like, what is this? I've never heard of this before. It is Zombies Assemble. This is not related to the Marvel Zombies comics. This is something else entirely. It is kind of interesting. It's a bit of a different a bit of a different take on the the zombie stuff than, you know, usual. Uh, it's interesting to see core cast members get turned so quickly. I'm not going to tell you who, but a couple core cast members get infected just in this first volume. Uh, and they're like, oh, we gotta f figure out a cure or whatever. So, I don't know how long this series is. But, like, I feel like it's kind of ballsy to, to, to make that sort of thing. To, to really put core cast members on the line so early on. Because it makes you... It puts you on edge in a little bit of a way because some, a lot of times in various media, the the main characters are basically just never at, at at risk unless like you're coming towards the very end. So that's an interesting thing to do is to put them at risk so early on in the story. Yeah, I uh, I don't have actually that much to say about it. It's interesting. Uh, it's an interesting take on something. You know, zombies and comic book superheroes are both, like, overplayed to hell and back. I won't say that this does anything particularly new, but it has a little bit of a different 
spin and stakes than usual. Though, when I put it up to Marvel Zombies, that's probably the better one. But this is also like an entire different, like filtered through an entire different culture. So there's just a different, this is a bit of a different vibe since this is um, of Japanese authorship. So like, it's got a bit of a different cultural understanding of the tropes of zombie fiction, which can make it a bit more interesting than your typical zombie fiction. But it, Marvel Zombies is really good. I'd also read that. That's a, uh, that's more of like a uh, horror comedy though. The next thing I'm gonna talk about here is a free comic book day thing. This was also I got from the anime convention. This was in the library they had set up there, the manga library they had set up there. Um, these are free to take. Again, it's a free comic book day. This has like a chapter of JoJo's Bizarre Adventure and then like a chapter of Yu-Gi-Oh! It was interesting that I'd read this because I actually just started watching JoJo last week or something like that. JoJo's Bizarre Adventure. And so this is a chapter from the first arc. As it is in here is basically exactly as this happens in the anime adaptation. Which is pretty interesting how accurate of an adaptation that is. As with Yu-Gi-Oh, this is from like earlier Yu-Gi-Oh. It's the first introduction of dual monsters in the manga, it seems, or very early. And so it was funny reading this because I also very, like when the game um, Yu-Gi-Oh! Master Duel came out, I jumped on that because some friends were playing it and I'd never really gotten into the Yu-Gi-Oh! card game before. I had cards when I was younger, but I never really played the game. So like, I don't even know how Yu-Gi-Oh! works. So let me, let me play it. And wow, Yu-Gi-Oh! is a bunch of BS. <laughs> the whole game is nonsense. Uh, there's a lot of nonsense rules and you sometimes, they're not properly explained in Master Duel. And so there was a couple of incidents where it's like, what even happened? And I had just like, look to the internet, like what the rules around this card gimmick was. And it was like, oh, I see. I just, the card gimmick doesn't work that way. The game didn't tell me. Oh, and really this manga chapter Yu-Gi-Oh is equally BS. It feels like some of the nonsense I would have run into while I was playing Master Duel. But like, Kaiba plays a card that he stole. And because he stole the card, the card didn't listen to him. So it just died. And then Yugi used Monster Reborn on it and defeated Kaiba. It's a bunch of nonsense, but like it feels right at home with with how nonsense the actual card game can be. All right, so now I'm gonna get into the stuff that I got in the manga box from January. But since it came late January, it was the Valentine's Day box. So this is a bunch of romance manga, basically. First one I got here is Daily Report about my Witch Senpai, which is okay. I thought this was fine. It's a pretty simple, like, rom-com, uh, very wholesome, about two, like, co-workers, and one of them is a witch, and witches aren't especially common, so she's basically taken advantage of to do tasks because she can do them by magic. Yeah, uh, Protag Chan here. And then Protag Kun is... He's not brand new, but he is a newer employee in this office. And, like, at first it's just sort of like, wow, a witch senpai is pretty cool. She's very helpful. She does her best all the time, every moment. Uh, and people take advantage of, of her because of that. And eventually, like, they just sort of start hanging out and working together. And they just develop a little bit of a relationship. It goes into some more like dramatic places later in the volume, talking about some sort of like previous trauma that 
Protag Chan has with a prior, regarding a prior relationship and some other stuff. And basically just like dealing with the fact that people do take advantage of her because she has these abilities that other people don't. And she is overly helpful. She's, she's a people pleaser type of person. And so people take advantage of her. And so the relationship that she and Protag Kuhn develop through that, she sort of becomes better at, you know, standing up for herself a little bit or setting boundaries. And I mean, they don't, I don't think they really like start dating until a bit later in the volume. This first volume is more just like set up to their relationship, sort of experiences they have together that lead them to realizing they have some sort of emotional interest in one another. It's, it's, it's basically fluff, but sometimes fluff is nice. I thought this was a nice read. Like there's some jokes here and there, but like it's more of a romance than it is a comedy. And like I did mention, it has some dramatic elements in it here and there, but it's pretty cool and it's pretty cute. I had a good time with it, so. Um, and then we had Kenka Bancho Otome loves Battle Royale. And Kenka Bancho is like a fighting game series about a high school of delinquents. Uh, not, I think very few of them have made it to the West. Uh, potentially only one, I think. Um, but the, it's like a series that's been running since the PlayStation 2. This is based on a spin-off game of the same name, I believe, where, uh, it's a dating sim, basically. So what happens in this is you've got your, your main character, who I cannot remember the name of, Hinako. Um, she's an orphan. She's been bullied because she's a good fighter, but she's a girl. Um, so people are afraid of her because she's strong, can beat people up, yeah, but she doesn't want to be that. She just is that because that's just the consequences of her birth. One day, as she's going to go to high school for the first time, she bumps into somebody on the street that somebody's like, oh no, I've been injured. Please, we must swap places because we look so similar. We must swap places so that you can go to my high school entrance ceremony for me because otherwise I'll get expelled. And for some reason, she lets herself get roped into this. And she dresses as this dude and goes to his high school opening ceremony. She's, she's now dressed as a dude. And she finds out it's an all boys high school and it's, a, it's not only an all boys high school, it's an all boys high school specifically for delinquents. And there's some sort of punch hierarchy and whoever punches best is the leader of the school. And on like the first day, she just knocks out the, the strongest person because that's just how strong she is. And that's it, she's the leader of the school now. And come to find out, the person she knocked over was lying, obviously, but is also her twin brother. She was abandoned because he, th their parent, parent, father, is a member of the Yakuza, like a high class member of the Yakuza. And this boy is intended to be like the heir. And so they abandoned the, the twin sister for some reason. I don't remember if it's said, but like the, the boy, he doesn't like to fight. He's like, fighting sucks. I don't want to do it. But the girl, she's really good at it. So they switch places so that the girl can punch her way to the top of the all boys delinquent high school and the boy can take the credit and not have to do the work. And so the boy dresses in drag and goes to school for the girl because they're so similar looking, nobody notices. Apparently, I assume they sound similar too, but nobody notices. It's a bunch of doki doki, blush blush nonsense, and it's, it's really stupid. It's really stupid. There's a lot of punching, there's a lot of blushing. It's stupid. I, I thought it was totally dumb. But like, you know, some people like stupid dumb trash. I like stupid dumb trash sometimes. I didn't particularly like this stupid dumb trash. This was a bit 
too stupid and dumb for me. Like, there's a lot of suspension of disbelief you have to do. There's just a lot of suspension of disbelief. And I don't understand... I, I don't understand why this exists in English. Because if I remember correctly from looking it up, the game this is based on was not localized to the, to the West. This game was not released in English. So why did this get released in English? I don't understand. The last book I really have to talk about here is uh, Rent a Really Shy Girlfriend. This is a spinoff of Rent a Girlfriend. Um, this is okay. Uh, apparently, the actual series is like a harem manga. This has like none of that. You're focused on her and it's more of like a comedy based on her social anxiety. Uh, but they do it in a way that's very respectful to people who have social anxiety. The joke isn't her. The joke is sort of the antics that this this stuff causes her to get into. And so it's like the, the comedy that comes from having social anxiety, being a bit, having issues with communication, and the, the funny things that might put you through. They might not be funny when you're going through them, they may be a bit embarrassing, but looking back, oftentimes they are kind of silly. That's sort of what this is, at least in this first volume. And for that, I think this is pretty all right. I thought it was fun, I guess. Hopefully, in my opinion, hopefully, this does not turn into something like that. The apparently harem stuff, but like probably will end up having some of the like weird harem anime elements in it later on. But this first volume, I thought was all right as just sort of like a slice of life comedy about living with social anxiety and how that, you know, makes things difficult. So that's the last book I have here, but I have some other things I want to show that I got here. I got these things also from the anime convention. I left this one in the plastic that it came in when I bought it. But these are manga adaptations of, this is of Ponyo, and this other one is The Secret World of Arietti. I think is what that movie is called. They're Studio Ghibli films. I bought them because I think they're interesting. First, I, I bought the Ponyo one first because that's the one of the two Ghibli films I've actually seen. And then when I came back on a different day, I bought the other one because this was the other one that they, the only other one they had. So I thought it would be interesting just to have them, even though I haven't seen that movie. But these are, basically they just take stills from the movie and make a manga out of it. It's, so it's not really like an adaptation, it's just the movie as a book now. So they're kind of just cool pieces to have for the moment, but since I can't read them, I did not read them for the video. So I don't know. I assume they're just direct adaptations of the, the movie. So, especially since this one is four volumes, I'm assuming that they're just direct adaptations. They remind me of something I'll have over here on the shelf. A long time ago, when I was in like elementary school, I got these from the book fair. You can tell they're old because of how beat up they are. These are Tokyo Pop. Technically, Tokyo Pop does like manga, localized manga type stuff. But these are more just comic books. But these are episodes of shows adapted as a comic. So it's the same concept as that. Uh, I've read these a lot. This is falling apart a bit. But, you know... This Spongebob one has four episodes in it. And then this Avatar one is an adaptation of the show. I think it's just like the first two episodes that these adapt. But I don't want to get too 
far into these. I just thought they were... These things that I got from the anime convention remind me of these, but this is, uh, I think, a higher quality version of this concept. So yeah, that's all the books that I read this month, and plus some other stuff that I just felt like talking about since... This is the last episode. Let's go out with a bigger thing. Um, we'll do a bit more. Break the boundaries of the concept. So we covered everything I pretty much want to cover today. If you go down in the description, you find links to all sorts of places. Twitter, Patreon, Bandcamp. If you go to Patreon, you can see an extended version of this and all of the other episodes of Reading Journal on there. They are significantly longer. This episode will probably be around... 40 minutes unedited. Be sure to check that out if that sounds interesting to you. If you like the video, hit the like button. If you dislike the video, hit the dislike button. Um, if you want to keep up with other shows that I'm working on, since this one is ending, tryouts, covers, wrap-ups, other, co other, other shows that I do, hit the subscribe button. Should be able to help you keep up with those. Leave a comment. Have you read any of these books? Have you seen any of these things that are related to this stuff? What are your thoughts on all this? Leave a comment. Let me know what you think. Share the video. Do things. Do things. Anyway, thanks so much for watching. I'll see you next time. Bye.